Hey, yo. Hey, what's this? I'm walking home at two this morning on Kingston Avenue, him and his granddaughter. Skell sticks a gun to their heads, smacks them around, takes the guy's wallet and watch. Out, 2 a.m. These poor people will not use common sense. And I crime found the guy's wallet. Okay. Have a safe one, Dickie. Take care, Al. Mr. Rosenfeld, I'm Sergeant Santoro. We were uh, mugged and robbed on Kingston Avenue. And they recovered your wallet. How you feeling, dear? My ear hurts where the man punched me. The man who hurt you should be ashamed of himself. All the photographs are still inside, Addie. That's something. Uh, you don't mind me asking, sir, what had you out so late? A party for her cousins. They're moving to Israel. Her parents are out of town. I didn't want she should miss it. it. Must have been a joyous occasion. Still, your appearance at that hour with the little one, the bad element's bound to take notice. All right, what do we got, Sergeant? A rob assault, Aaron. Oh, be that child, these animals. Description of the perp. The detectives who interviewed Mr. Rosenfeld have the description. They're handling the case. So, will the detectives investigate as effectively as those street cops gave protection? We do the best we can, Aaron. Mr. Rosenfeld, are you going to take your granddaughter to the emergency room? Because I can have a sector car ride you there. They can come with me. My van is outside. On the way, you'll tell me what that mom's attack the two of you looks like. To do what with that information, Aaron? What's necessary that others won't? Don't be part of the problem. You say... Problem and solution to a Jewish person. He gets very uncomfortable, Sergeant. Aaron, you want to be constructive? Why don't you explain to Mr. Rosenfeld? Out 2 a.m. with those sideburns and a little one, all he needs a sign on him says, Rob and beat us up. Pay us, not sideburns. Pay us, you told me that. I told you also we will protect our vulnerable ones. Alan, her ear hurts. I want to take her to the doctor. All right. Let me drive you. Thank you for your help. The squad will be in touch if anything develops. I'm Maddie Rosenfeld. I'm Richard Centaur. I hope that your ear feels better real soon. Come. Pay us. Next time I'll remember. If you put this through 911, Mrs. Westrope, the desk could send us out. All right, all right. Let me talk to my boss. When we can. If you won't do things properly, we see first the people who do. Dispute at the Westrope's. That's unique. If Central isn't holding work, maybe going now heads off something worse. I have some inkling in the O'Donnell's may be involved here. Okay to go? Yeah, good. Versico. I have some personal business to conduct. Tell me not to lose my temper. Do yourself a favor, so I was trying to keep that famous uh, Italian temper of yours in check.
Still good? Looked like you got in this kitchen. Want to tell me anything, boss? The assignment came from the captain, Jack. It was half a weasel. They're going to keep you on a wrap until the investigation closes. Yeah, I don't know why they changed my re-interview. Jack, you live in other people's heads on this. You're going to drive yourself nuts. Right now, that's a dollar and a quarter cab ride. Got your statement of mind, right? Yeah. When the rat squad's done jerking you around, give me your statement and tell them to kiss your ass. Want me to walk through it for you? No, I don't. You yeah, all right? 7-4 Precinct, report of a 1034 assault in progress. Alley behind 2310 Eastern Parkway. Group of male Hasidim assaulting a male black. Let's get to that. Rob and hurt Jewish people. You think we don't do nothing? Get away from me. I didn't rob nobody. You didn't rob nobody. You ran nine blocks. Unless you're trying to kill me. You're arrested. Citizens arrest. Get the hell away you're from me. Arrested. 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 Arr
Well, do you think a nine-year-old knows the difference? I think nine-year-olds and eight-year-olds and seven-year-olds know a great deal more than they're generally given credit for. Well, this one nine-year-old, Mr. Bloomquist, he had his feelings hurt so bad by you, he's been trying to convince us for a week that he's sick so he doesn't have to go to school. How to explain this? <clears throat> I'm a high-energy person. I'm very committed to teaching. I sometimes like to describe my classroom as a hard hat area. With me as the foreman, young minds under construction. What is he talking about? I have a general sense of what he's talking about. Uh, hard hat area, Sergeant Santoro, in that kids get dirty, they get tired, and occasionally they get smacked in the head with what would be the verbal equivalent of a two by four. Go ahead and say you're the foreman and pretend that it's a hard hat area. Just don't be calling my Charlie stupid. Again, not to be argumentative, but I didn't call him stupid. Don't be calling his mistakes stupid either, then. Because I won't come with a verbal equivalent of a two by four. I'll give you a good actual smack and a puss. We understand each other, Mr. Bloomquist. Do not use that word to him. All right. Thank you very much. We're grateful you taking time out to see us. Come on, honey. Oh, Richard. I told him your brother's on the job and he still wrote you the summons. Someone in his family? Well, did you happen to get his name? That's what it sounds like. I think his sister. I got the one brother, Patrick. Been away in the slam. Some highway hump gave Kathleen a moving violation on the FDR. I got this guy. I want to reach out before the highway cop turns the work in. Hey, tell Kathleen I'm looking forward to dinner. Officer Doyle and I, we got history. I mean, me and him go back. So you've been the man in the family, huh, Donald, with uh, Patrick away? You do what you gotta do. You said you've been out looking for work? Yeah, that Foxwood Casino up by Connecticut. Bastards, they turned down my app. Good you show the app. I lacked information. I couldn't fill in a couple of blanks. Donald, what we're here to talk to you about, showing leadership, restraining this trouble with your neighbors. You saw our wall. Do you call that restraint? Which is where, as a responsible head of your household, you draw the line, we won't get sucked into this mess. No, 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 no. We turn the other cheek too often. Well, look at your sheet here, collared with your brother driving a stolen cab through Gavin O'Donnell's repair shop window. Because Gavin O'Donnell wouldn't release Patrick's own car, which was why we were in the cab. All I'm saying is, your leadership role with your brother getting out is heading trouble off instead of looking for it where everyone gets locked up. That making sense to you, Donald? He don't know Patrick like you and me, Officer Doyle. Has this been his attitude right along? I think he's been trying to listen, Jimmy. I'll lock you up right now, Donald. Hey, whose wall was assaulted anyhow? We'll handle that part with the O'Donnells. I want you to know we're standing no nonsense with getting even. And tell Patrick that as well. I can't tell Patrick nothing if I'm in custody. Knows his leadership role now, Jimmy. I think he wants to help out here. All right. Hey, never mind the ride home. I gotta go down to the Motor Vehicle Bureau. Go ahead. Hey, uh, would suspensions be the same as renewals? I mean, where do you go for that? Line up at information. Wow. Reach out to that highway cop? His shift's over. So he already turned the work in? She doesn't take a tone either, Kathleen. That type of situation, she's always really polite. That's what I guess. Just a little I met her. So, uh, we still on for dinner? Says she's looking forward to it, too. She did say that. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing your brother, too. A word with you, Sergeant. You need to make any calls. There's an outside line in there. I ought to call the newspapers. If you give me just a second, sir, I'm hoping we can straighten this all out. I got nothing for you. Wait, wait, you gotta have something for me. You just spent two hours with him. He's gonna tell you the truth. He didn't say what that was, so I got nothing for you. You believe what he said? He wants to tell me the truth? Yeah, that's right. Wow, that wasn't so hard, was it? Right here. My God, what is this? They saw the guy Frank's with jimmying a car door on Kingston Avenue, made him for the mugging last night. 
Did our jobs for us, did they? It was the guy's own car that he was trying to get into, Captain. Is that solely his say so? We checked the registration. Did it run him through BCI? No record, sir. None of this means he's not doing armed robberies. Hey, what did they do to Lloyd Pauly? Who's Lloyd Pauly? Man, we were just talking about. Can I help you, sir? I know Lloyd Pauly in 10 years. He owned the store right next to my store on Kingston Avenue. Now, what those beers do to him? Let's not be using slurs and epithets here. You're going to be in trouble. Oh, he's going to let those guys... your information. Now, let us do our investigating in this matter. Yeah. Sure. What happens is there's a lot of people own stores at night do armed robberies. It's not unheard of. Far from it. They had seen him chase this guy a half a dozen blocks, and one of them punched him in the face. While they were attempting to make a citizen's arrest. Right. Uh, right. Is he, uh, does he want to press charges of his own? He was making those kind of noises. Suspect for armed robbery, and he wants to press charges. Does he know who he wants to press charges against? I don't know if he's sure which Hasid hit him. No, no, he doesn't know that. He just knows he wants to set the whole pack of them with their big stingers loose on me. Just in time, Sergeant. So just lining up outside the house with pitchforks. What do we got? Sita made a citizen's arrest on that guy with Frank in the 124 room. Says it was him that mugged that man and his granddaughter last night. All right, fellas. Aaron, how did you know it was him? What evidence did you have? Eddie Rosenfeld's ID. That's what evidence I had. Before Shul, we took her in the van. We took her riding. That guy was breaking into a car. She pointed him out. Where's Eddie Rosenfeld now? She was driven home on my instruction. What, you want her exposed while we're chasing? You want some animal hurting her for speaking out? Do we like him? Owns a car. Owns a gift shop. Ugh. Aaron! What? You make her more reliable than Addie Rosenfeld? First sniff, boss. This guy they beat up, he's not right. Is that your sniff? Well, your sniff don't count. Are they represented? Those people always have good lawyers, right? Find out for me who represents those beards. Hi, Mr. Rosenfeld. Ah, my granddaughter would like to know, is the man she said robbed us here? Hi, Eddie. Uh, actually, we won't want her looking at that person until we have a lineup organized. I wish I could say, but I was hit from the back of the head. That's the man we just saw on the street. That's not the man who attacked us. This is a niche. You made a mistake? We were riding around in the van. They were yelling at me, Aaron and the others. Is that him? Is that him? And then we saw him. They said he matched 100% in the description. And I said that's him. It's not him? It's not him. I'm sorry. That's all right, sweetheart. Aaron, you need a lawyer. Hey, Jack. Hey. Jimmy Dole around? Not going in there with Jimmy. Talk to I.B. You should have your delegate with you. Going in there by myself. Why? Because you don't got a friend in the world? Lieutenant Jonas is ready for you. Okay. If you didn't kill that man, Jack, don't let him put it on you. Don't go giving him your neck. Went in? Yeah. Dragging his sorry ass. Don't talk that way, Clement. I don't like people feeling sorry for themselves. And you never get in frame for murder. Maybe you don't know how you'd act. Are you sure he's being framed? 
Just don't be so tough all the time, all right? All right. I didn't have to put the bag on. I'd go get him some flowers. That you have waived your delegate, I take, is an indication that we're on a footing of trust. Ask your first question. Just tell me in your own words about September 22nd. From my morning dump? No. Start with uh, your part in the apprehending of the suspect, Dashon Hopkins. Officer Doyle tackled him. My partner, Officer Valentine, and I helped to subdue him, and I put him in cuffs. Was Hopkins offering any resistance at that point? I don't recall anything physical. We'd been shot several times in the chest, and he was bleeding pretty good from those wounds. He was running his mouth some without making a lot of sense. You recall what he said? To the effect, Major Case had hassled his mother while they were looking to grab him up. You're aware there is a civilian that stated that uh, he saw you strike Hopkins on the street. You recall doing that? I recall grabbing him by the chin and telling him to shut up. Did you strike him? If I did, I don't remember. If I did, it would have been a smack in the puss to get him to cooperate. A little smack. Why do you have to hit a man already shot three times to get him to cooperate? I've seen guys shot six times need a smack. Hmm. <clears throat> what happened once Hopkins was inside? Took him into the sitting room and laid him on the floor. Ah. Now, in the sitting room, the word is coming in who's shot and who's dead. How did that affect you? How do you think it affected us? Your and friends are dead. You're upset. Yeah, we were upset. Two cops are dead. Another you don't have to life. go through the list. We're trying to establish your state of mind. I gather upset is too mild a word. Upset's too mild, that's right. Were you enraged? Yeah, I was enraged. Or is that too mild? Your game, pal. Your lousy rules. What do you mean by that? I mean, use whatever words you want. You weren't there, you don't know what happened. Which is what I'm trying to find out. Use whatever words you want, because that's not going to help you understand. You were more than upset. You were more than enraged. Kiss my ass. Your man. friends were dead and their killer was in front of you and he didn't give one good damn about what he did. You kiss my ass with your stinking word games. Blood for blood, officer. Is that what it came to? Did I want that? Did I want that in my heart? Did you? Yeah, I did. I wish the prick dead. So, what did you do? What I did is... I walked out the room like Jimmy Doyle said to do. <laughs> Your buddies are dead in their own blood and brains, and you just walk away. Hoping he'd bleed out before the medics came and saved him. Is that a crime? Was I supposed to run an IV, transfuse the guy? Our dead ones and the rest of us risking our lives on the street? That wasn't enough? One little slap, Officer Lowry. One little slap like a fairy. You got any more, sir? Not just now. How'd it go? I think I gave him my throat. I'll tell you, Donna, he's good. He had me going. He's good. Donna, I know you didn't look to hurt me. Thanks, Jack. Don't tell Clemmy we're in a clinch. <laughs> Taking too many ass whippings already.
My name is Solomon Schuller. I have been asked by your Captain Zarola to provide fillers for a lineup involving Mr. Aaron Geller. You'll want to take these gentlemen upstairs to the detective squad. Thank you very much. May I ask, will you also be representing Mr. Geller? Yes, I would. Come on, even. Mit darf Dotten sein. Captain? You know where you're going? Oh, yes. The sergeant directed me. Will they turn sideways? Face to the right, please, gentlemen. Four. Where do you recognize number four from? Chasing me in the street and calling me mugger and cornering me and punching me in the alley. Was that man the ringleader? Yes. He was, specifically. That's right. Take this gentleman outside. Anything for you, Captain. Thanks for your cooperation. Gonna arrest him? And the others, too? Ah, uh, we got a small hiccup with that. Just give us a minute, would you? Come on. Come on, sir. That ends that. Am I right? Calling the wrong man a ringleader? He was present at the scene. But not the ringleader. Mr. Geller was, which invalidates his ID. You coming to work with us, Captain? You want to go to bat with your sole complainant picks a wrong chief assailant? Chief assailant was in the lineup. Maybe the odds of picking them go up a little. Other county heard from him. You never saw that, Sergeant. Dummy line up first, suspect in the second group. Of course, we never got to the second group in this instance, did we? I don't think Aaron Geller should be released. Some of our officers witnessed the last part of the incident. We ought to wait, see how they write it up. Come with me, Sergeant Santoro. I will not be exposed to flank attacks while simultaneously withstanding frontal assault. Is that the whole time life war collection, Captain? You could use a history lesson, Sergeant Santoro. The Jewish people have been persecuted since before you and I were born. You release Aaron Geller now, they'll teach you a history lesson out on the street. That's why we wear these uniforms, Sergeant. Captain, even you and me only knowing each other a short while, I feel like the last thing in the world you'd want someone phones downtown. How you have manipulated a crime investigation to set a guilty man free. Don't you threaten me with phone calls to downtown, Sergeant Santoro. I'm not who dropped the dime. You and me start rolling around on the mat, you're going to wind up with your shoulders pinned. For God's sake, use your head. We got the Hopkins situation, as you call it, hanging over all of us. Now, a law-abiding black man gets beaten in the precinct and the deck gets stacked to walk the people who did it. Doesn't that sound like trouble to you? You make a good point. I seen them aren't the only ones with stingers, Captain. You give me food for thought, Sergeant. I want Aaron Geller held in custody until I can talk with him and Mr. Pauling. An internal conciliation process. Do you want to call it that? Out of the spotlight, bring everyone to the table. Can I go and do that? I'm sorry for that outburst, Sergeant. Someone mentions phone calls to downtown. I get my guard up. Yeah, good. I didn't survive in this department all these years without reacting to certain red flags. Protecting myself, I happen to be pretty good at. Yes, sir. I'm sure that it's one of your strengths. Go ahead. Try to cool this out. He's talking to our minister. Thanks. Mr. Pauling, can I talk to you? See, arrested? That loudmouth that chased me down? 
He's still in custody. They have not filed formal charges. What's taking him so long? There's some confusion. In regards to the man you picked out of the lineup, was he the person that actually hit you? I just told my minister I could smell this coming. Y'all gonna shine this on? Nobody's gonna shine it on, Mr. Paul. The DA is also going to look at the reports that my officers filed. Guess this means I'm going to go to jail for beating up all them Jews. Sir, this guy that hit you is not the most level-headed person in the world. Don't have to be. He's got, what, 50,000 people behind him? Come on strong with the contributions. All vote for who the rabbis say to vote for. He's the man. In his heart, he's a decent guy. He wants to look out for his people. Sometimes he gets carried away. Punching me in the face. There's no excuse. Him doing that. It was a 12-year-old girl and a grandpa. They got hit. They got robbed. And the little one made a mistake. Telling this Aaron it was you. Oh, what are you saying? I should drop the charges? No, I'm not saying that. I am asking you if you'll come with me, see this man in the cells, listen to what he has to say before you decide what to do. Where are the cells at? Frankie, yeah. you can take the desk. Sure. Eric Geller. Meet Lloyd Pauling. How do you do? Anything you want to say? From behind bars, everybody's got a story. Right, so what's yours? I thought you was a wrong guy. I didn't want you to get away. You thought maybe you should have made sure? A hundred percent. I should have made sure. I was wrong to accuse. I was wrong to hit. I get tired of hearing about your people's trouble. A mistaken beating has no excuses. You know, my nephew got murdered by Puerto Ricans. Mad as I was, it didn't give me the right to go hitting Puerto Ricans trying to get in their car. I'm sorry for what I did to you. More than that, I can't say. Am I wrong, Presser, for Chinese? They both like Chinese. I mean, should we just go where you usually go? Could look like Rusikov's paying Rusikov and insists on calling the tune. That's all we're thinking of, Phil. Sector Eddie, report of a 1034 assault in progress, 234 16th Street. 7-4, Charlie, we'll handle that job, Central. 10-4, Sector Charlie. The West Ropes. You wasted a good talk or two. I look at it as honing my communication skills. What now? I didn't do nothing. He hit me in the head with a brick. You tell me who's wrong. Who knocked down the wall in the first place? Was it you or Donald hit him? It was me. Shut your mouth, Donald. I did it. In self-defense. He's got a son half brain damage from glue sniffing. And the yoke don't fall far from the tree. You speak against Kevin and I'll stick this trunk right up your ass, sonny boy. Get down off that ladder. I won't get down. You don't stand in front of me and threaten someone. I'm snapping a chalk line to get this wall built on account of I don't want to look at their faces one more minute than it's absolutely necessary. I ain't having no wall built by a drunk Irishman. I'm going to have a proper wall built by an Italian nation and they're paying for it. Tells you to get down, you do it. You to spill the beer? Arrest him. Him locked up in my son getting out. There's two things to celebrate. Once you go back to service and the workers at the Navy Yard, you pot it all south. I'll knock you in the next week. Now everyone goes. Cut it out! Well, if it isn't Lady Astor, ran a court. You say I'm not a lady, I'll climb up and piss on your desk. This way, folks. Put a beer on that Jew. Not pursuing his remedies, Mr. Pauling, huh? Not pressing charges, no. Yeah, I appreciate you reaching out. 
Aaron, you can talk like a cop all you want, but you gotta let us do our job. Yeah, we any closer to bringing in the prep on that armed robbery? No closer, no. Uh, Major cases has it, or it's being handled by the squad? Squad. All right, maybe I'll call some of my people up in Williamsburg, see if there's anything with the same M.O. up there. Don't put your hands on anybody. I'm worried. The case gets cold, we'll never catch the perp. That may be exactly what happens, Aaron. Not every crime gets solved. Not every criminal gets caught. But it don't help that any to go around terrorizing innocent people. Take care of it. Sergeant. You're also a decent person. What did I take you for Chinese food? Best egg rolls in the city of New York by the Port Authority on 9th Avenue. Not Chinatown? My opinion, no. Phil's first post at the academy was Midtown. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. Foot posts at the Port Authority and uh, guarding prisoners at Bellevue, the two highest occupational exposures, the insane. <laughs> they documented that, huh? You missed that issue of people? Officer Doyle, how you doing, Patrick? Matter slam. Expect a more of a welcoming committee than I got. Your mom and Donald should be out tomorrow morning. Yeah, what'd they do? Drunk and disorderly. Yeah. What's your name? Phil Rusikoff. Well, how you doing, Phil Rusikoff? I'm Patrick Westrup. I'm here with my family, Patrick. Yeah, well, I'm not with mine because you's locked them up. See him in the morning. Was the O'Donnells involved? You should leave now, Patrick. Sure. Good. It's not my habit, drinking in cop bars anyhow. No offense. I put my last coffee can filled with gasoline on anyone's hot plate in their kitchen. I did my last inadvertent murder. No slate. Hey, Hiya, Doc. How are you this evening? Fine, thanks. How are you? Oh, fine, fine. I was hoping to find you here. Is that right? Yeah, this uh, Officer Jack Lowey being raked over the coals in the Hopkins investigation. I want to express my opinion. Uh, it's an unjust thing. Based on what? Well, our publicity hound, Asian American ME, made the call on the cause of death using everything but a megaphone. Uh, Dr. Nakatani? Mm hmm. Three bullets to the man's chest. Uri Gela Nakatani discerns by uh, it had to have been telepathy that rather than blood loss and trauma from his wounds, this Hopkins dies from compression fractures to the ribs, puncturing his lungs. <laughs> What don't you agree with about that? Oh, where should I begin? If damage to the ribs did kill him, the culprit was acute trauma to the posterior region in the vicinity of the L5 vertebra. Which means what, Doc? Kick in the back. I mean, did anyone say they saw Lowry try a field goal on this guy? No. <sighs> Nobody said that. Well, uh... I just wanted to tell you that and and uh, say hello. It's good to see you, Don. Uh, you know, nights I uh, I prefer to be at home. What's wrong? Um, 
when Hopkins was in the sitting room, when everyone had left him alone, I went in there. Murray, some things are good left alone. I looked at him lying on the floor. And I didn't care. He was shot and bleeding his life out. <laughs> what I thought was, you just ruined my life. You son of a bitch, you decided to go crazy in the street and I wound up losing Mike. Stop talking. No. There's no point in telling me this. I hated him. That was all I was. I walked up and I kicked him. Hard. In the back. You're talking to me now as a friend. I don't know how much you've been drinking. I regard this as a private conversation. I got no obligation to report. I needed to tell you. Before it got where I had to tell. I don't know that I got enough to move on, Jack. How much you think I'm afraid? What he's gone through so far has been a little stay at the beach. Yeah, Marie. I don't want you talking to Jack. Or Dickie Santoro. Or Jimmy Doyle. Or nobody else. Till we see how this shakes out. I'm your sergeant. Leave this with me. Okay. Everybody but Charlie. You still mad? No. I know I could have handled it better. He's Charlie's teacher, Dickie. I know. Whatever type. Jerk. <laughs> Was there any repercussions with the boy? Charlie didn't say anything. Attitude's all right. Say good night. He's waiting up. Hi, Daddy. You still up? I wanted to see you. How was school? It was better. How was work? Busy. You finish your homework? Most of it. Mr. Bloomquist helped me. Yeah. He gave me two hard hats. Where? On the top of my homework paper. He puts them on top if you do good. Uh, well. Well what? I think you use well if you do well. I say good, too. You could show me your homework in the morning. I gotta get some sleep. Good night, son. Night, Daddy. <laughs> 